J&J Podcast, shining a spotlight on the South African entertainment industry, one conversation at a time. So welcome back. Mm -hmm. Joined again in the studio with Carla. We're going to be talking about some topics today, one of them being the entertainment industry. Yep. Film. Mm Mm-hmm. Content creation. What's it like to be an actor? What's it like to be in the movie business? Very hard. That's the answer. Very tricky. People who have a nine to five are secure. They have a paycheck. They get up at a certain time and they know that's it. That's I'm getting 9,000, whatever, and and they're secure. Mm. In the entertainment industry, there is no security. Our government does not support us in any way. For example, when I do a job, I'm paying tax like anyone else. But we don't have medical aid. We don't have all the things that make a person a person. We literally are out there running from check to check, from job to job. It's a very hard business. Well, you know, you're one of the the old faces in the industry. Everyone probably recognizes you your face. Do you have to say the word old? Do you have to say the word? One of the old, one of the old chicks. <laughs> um, but you've been an entertainer for quite a long time. Yeah. Tell us about the couple of things that you've been in. Um, well, I've been in the entertainment industry since I was a really tiny little girl. Um, and I was started as an instrumentalist. And I'd go to different concerts and play different instruments. My grandfather was a pastor, so I've sung gospel throughout my life, on stage, in choirs, etc. And then um, I did a commercial one day, mm-hmm. and I sat on the beach and I saw a whale, and and I was singing to myself. And this beautiful woman with big red hair came to me, who was also in the commercial. She said, "Oh no, no, no! Don't stop! Don't stop!" And I said, "Oh, okay." And I just sang and sang. And she said, why don't you come and do jingles for me? I'm a radio DJ. I said, what's jingles? <laughs> I had no idea what a jingle was. Mm-hmm. And the moment I stepped into the studio, I felt so at home. It's like I'm home. But like you've so arrived. I've arrived. Yeah. So I was singing. And from singing, um, you know, I joined uh, the Waterfront Theatre School. Um, which is uh, our principal was Delia Sainsbury. She's from the UK and basically trained through um, Trinity College of London and became like a triple threat, like learn how to dance, learn how to sing. Um, I mean, I could sing, but there are all these technical aspects, you know, so it's really about discipline. Being an artist is about discipline. And in Cape Town, I've done such amazing work because the work's been coming here internationally. I've done a great Disney movie, Black Beauty. Um, I've done um, a, a reenactment, so American reenactment crime series, crime investigation. Um, so I've experienced really the most amazing jobs in Cape Town in, from international clients, but also here, um, for example, Mnet and CakeNet and all our, our big stations are pushing local content now. So you can apply you know, and get the funding that you need. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, so so basically, it was a TV commercial that got that you got the bug, and you saw how it works, and how oh, I want to be part of this industry, and you, you just went absolutely, from that. Absolutely, a lot of people absolutely. say the same thing. Yeah, you get cast in a commercial, and then that's it for life. They're like lifers then. Right. Well, you know, it's not all singing and dancing and all all, all merry merry merry. You know, sometimes yeah. work dries up, dries up, and. You know, I've I've also been in a, in, a, in a lot of um, TV shows or films. Um, I've also done commercials as well. I, I also started doing commercials as well. Right. And you know, sometimes the work dries up, and it can dry up for so many different reasons. It could mm. be um, that all of a sudden, you know, you cut your hair, and it's like, well, nobody wants you anymore, and you right. think, oh, you know, I made a terrible mistake. Right. That's now you have to, to wait for it mine. to go. Yeah. It happened to me once. Yeah. Um, I was. You cut your hair, and you yeah. didn't know your ears were sticking out. Not well, you. Well, the friend that I know. Yeah. Well, yeah. it turned out for, for, for me, um, I had my hair cut. And what I didn't realize, my screen age um, that, that I was known for and yeah. cast for was considerably older than I am and still is, actually. And when I had longer hair, I looked at that screen age. As soon as I had it cut, More I didn't. And yeah. I didn't fit anymore. So all of right. a sudden, I wasn't noticed by anyone mm. because I now just looked like a normal person rather than this unusual guy 
big guy with the long hair, mm. not long hair, I didn't have like long hair right. like a horse but tail. And all, I, I, yeah. I didn't have hair like that. I wish I had hair like that, but I didn't have hair like that. So yeah, that mm. sort of thing. Also imagine like this coronavirus thing. What do you do? You know, people who, who are oh, taking a gamble acting, they don't have insurance. They don't have it was savings usually. Yeah. Um, to, to most actors actually is, you know, it's, it's a lifestyle, it's passion. So they don't have savings. So to not work for two years, it's a killer. I, I can't even begin to tell you how crazy that was. You can join the J and J community by joining all our social media platforms and keeping this conversation going. Don't forget to hit the notification button and like and subscribe. So Jason, it is a very exciting time for South Africa because we're seeing a surge of people coming to make films, to make commercials. Um, right here, because you know Cape Town is a beautiful place. It, it is, and, and you know when you when you look at around, you know wherever you go in the world, you have challenges filming. Mm -hmm. A lot of those in South Africa don't exist. For instance, we have really good daylight hours. The weather is pretty predictable. The weather station is pretty accurate. Right. It says it's going to rain, it will rain, but then right. it doesn't rain for weeks. And they're right, it doesn't rain. So you can film for longer. Um, what I don't like is, mm -hmm. is sometimes when I hear things like, oh, it's cheaper to film in South Africa. I don't believe it is cheaper. I think some of the labor may be cheaper for crew, as an example, mm -hmm. considerably less than it is uh, in the US. But I don't believe it's cheaper to film here. But you, you also, you know, you want the quality. You want mm. great cameras. You mm. want great sound, great lighting. You don't want to compromise on your product, I feel, yeah. by using substandard anything. Yeah. So you want to come as an international client, but you want to book the best of the best, the best cast, the best crew, the best everything, mm. so that your product is amazing. Yeah. Surely, that's the, the point. The, the, da the danger, and I'm, I'm playing devil's advocate here, mm -hmm. only from things that I've seen in the past, it doesn't necessarily mean it's like that now. Mm -hmm. I think things develop, but certainly in the past, when I was working, um, in particularly in film, mm -hmm. uh, filming from Cape Town, there's a lot of international companies come here. Yeah. Um, they're coming here really because the scenery is what they want. Exactly. And they bring a lot of their own people. Yes, yeah. they employ people, they create jobs, they'll bring members of crew in, um, but the key members yeah, of cast, the, the key members of yeah. crew were coming in with them. Yeah. So, you know, if, if there's some sort of skills transfer, I completely agree with it. But if they come in here just to exploit the cheaper label in the, in the mid range crew mm. and actually just use the environment almost like, like raping the film set, because all they're doing is just using Cape Town's natural beauty for their own gain. You know, then I don't, I don't think that's right. I think what we should be concentrating on as a country, mm -hmm. it's not opening up to the world and saying, "Hey, come film here. We're like the film capital of the world, right. or second, I believe, at the third at the moment." That what we should be doing is developing our own stories, our right. own way of doing things, right? Um, because there's enough people here, right, to justify watching it. You know, we're not a small country. How right. many people are in South Africa now? Do you know how many there is? Yeah. Can we fact check that, anyone? Ooh, Can, we're going to have to fact check that I think we have to one. fact check that. Yeah. But we're not a small country. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you look at other small companies, countries, they have their own developed TV networks. Why don't we? Yes, we do. But I'm not sure that it's the kind of content that anybody really wants to watch. I'm not sure, actually. Maybe we need to have a look at that as well as another yeah. subject. But specifically, when it comes to making film and TV productions here, Everybody's talking about the big internationals coming, the BBC's coming, Netflix is coming, Amazon's coming. Mm -hmm. Well, if they're doing things for here, for the people, and upskilling people, great. But if they're just coming here just to exploit people, not so great. And I'm not so sure. A lot of my actor friends, mm. I don't see them in any of these productions. I see them in... But is, is, having, is having a job exploitation so i feel what we need to do is have the government come in and nationalize rules and regulations so right you're coming as an international set make sure that you pay our cost x amount and our crew x amount so so that there's a standard so that you don't have exploitation you know i i i sort of agree with you but there's also another side of the story that mm -hmm. maybe you're not thinking about so imagine i mean and there, there are such 
organizations that already exist. It might not be government led, but it's industry led. So yeah. you've got you've got uh, subscriptions that you can subscribe to, which basically means that you're going to get a minimum pay, a minimum this, minimum that. There's access to a pension fund. It actually does exist. It's a global thing. It's called SAG. Yeah, SAG after. Right. Um, however, here's a problem. So the big productions, they already understand that because they also make things in the UK or Europe or the, or mm -hmm. the US or anywhere else. Um, so they're used to having to do this all the time. Right. But when you come to South Africa, it's a little bit different mm. because there's a lot of independent filmmakers. And this right. is key to it. As an independent filmmaker, if I was going to make a film, and I have made films in the past, I can't afford to pay those rates because where am I getting my money from? Mm. And then all of a sudden what happens is instead of having five members of cast that I need, so there's another way of thinking. Mm -hmm. So as an independent filmmaker, yes, which I've made films in the past as an independent, and I've funded it, and I've had to save up or I've had to borrow money or I've had to find investors from somewhere that believe in the project in order to produce it. I don't have Hollywood budgets. But the so, rules as an, for you as an independent filmmaker shouldn't be the same as the commercial guy. Ah, but where do you right. draw the line? We're talking about protecting actors. Mm. So that actor, so if you join this union, for instance, yes. in my knowledge of it, I might be wrong. Again, something else that we probably need to fact check. So I'm not just yeah. coming up with an idea. Um, my understanding of, of that um, it's a union. My understanding of the union is that you cannot do a job for a production company that is not registered also with their union. Right. So, you know, with all the best will in the world, if you're a, a super A-list actor, mm -hmm. then you're going to be part of everybody's union. If you're a Hollywood company, you're going to be joining all of these unions. Right. And you can go and do what you want, the likes of your Brad Pitt's of the world. Or, or your Beyonce's, that kind of thing. Yeah, they're all going to be part of this union and uh, nobody really cares about them because they're earning billions anyway. Exactly. But what happens is the guy on the street, the girl on the street who's struggling, they've got a passion, they want to be an actress, they mm -hmm. want to be an actor, they take a gamble, they leave the nine-to-five job and say, hello world, I'm here. Mm -hmm. If they join that union, which costs money, by the way, I know. first of all, all where are you going to get it from? Do. Yeah. Now, all of a sudden, the independent filmmaker who's taking also a gamble in the same way that they're doing, mm -hmm. self-funding a film, or he's begged, borrowed, and stole from everybody he's ever met mm -hmm. in his life just to chip in some money to, to get this project off the ground, he can't employ all those good actors because they're all in the union. So it's a little bit wrong. What do you feel about the role of government in terms of support? You know, I think that is absolutely a crucial part of the mm. whole either problem or definitely solution going forward. Mm -hmm. So, you know, as we know, South Africa has just gone through this whole re-election. There's been a, a, yes. a cabinet shuffle. Yes. Government's Very now exciting. split. Yeah. It's changed. But what is interesting is there is a new minister Absolutely. of, of arts, arts and culture. culture and I believe sport as well. Yes. Um, who covers that thing. Now, this is you know, the, the, the entertainment side of arts and culture, mm -hmm. I'm not sure if it's been ignored and neglected by government so far. So, yeah, so, you know, as we know, South Africa has just gone through a huge re-election process. Correct. There's a new cabinet. Everyone's been shuffled around. Mm -hmm. Government split. But we have a new minister. Gaten McKenzie. Yeah, yes. for arts, culture and, and sport. Mm -hmm. I've interviewed him before. Oh, wow. Before he was part of the government. In fact, when he was the mayor, uh, the I think the general mayor of the, mm -hmm. of the Central Karoo. Yes, correct. Um, he's a very, very dynamic guy. And he's one of those that if he says he's going to do something, he'll do it. He doesn't accept That's challenges very need. lightly. That's exactly what we need. We need someone passionate. We need someone who can see the pitfalls mm -hmm. and who can say, hey, I'm going to fall in here, fall in there. They need money. And you're right. Mm -hmm. They have been throwing money at the sport left, right, and freaking center. Mm -hmm. Whereas we in the arts have had to grovel all the time. But I'll tell you what, the more festivals we have, mm -hmm. the more award shows we have, that is what creates the buzz around the creative community. And that's what we need. 
more yeah. support. That's it. Well, more support and access to funding. And the only way you get yeah. access to funding is by lobbying. Well, not us. We can't do it. But the minister can lobby for funding. Right. Now, I happen to know, because I know him personally, and I've met him on mm -hmm. several occasions, he is very passionate about the arts. He's very right. passionate about media. In fact, I don't know if you know this, um, and we don't need to fact check this because I actually know this myself. Um, he's a self-published author. Did you know that? Wow, no, I didn't know One that. One of the best-selling books, I believe, in the world. An autobiography? No, what is it? It's, it yeah, it, it's his story. He's got oh, a massive, massive story. We're not going to go into that now. Mm -hmm. It's not for this show. But he also is an artist. If you think about it, he's an author. Doesn't get more artier than that, does it? Right. He's wrote his own book. He's published his own book, mm. and it's one of the best sellers. You need to go out. You need to go and find I'm this book. To. I'm not going to do it for you. I'm not even going to tell you what's called. Can I lend yours? No, it's my <laughs> it, it, it's my copy. You can go out and you can find your own. Do your own research. In fact, okay. you can do some fact checking over there, will, and you can you I can find it. That. So yeah, I think it's very very exciting times at Absolutely. the moment because I see this as a guy who's quite passionate about anything he puts his mind to. Right. Uh, and I've watched him come up the ranks um, over the last year or two. And I believe this guy has, has got what it takes. And I'm happy that he's in it. He's been put into a, a sphere, whether he was elected to do it or whether he wanted it or, or not. He's going to help because mm. we need to be on the map. Because if you think about it, on the global stage, what South African films have ever made it? Not that many, is they? Mm. Can you think of any? Well, what happens with the independent film uh, makers? They send their films to different festivals, and that's mm -hmm. how we actually get, with or without the funding, we get that um, international recognition. Oh, this m yeah. movie's from Africa, et cetera, et cetera. So it, there's a lot of independent work that goes with the independent um, people. But you ultimately, know? these independent filmmakers... They want a big audience. Absolutely. But the only but they way don't they don't have the support. But in order to make no. films, guess what they need? Money. Yeah. Film festivals don't really make you money. They get your accolades. They get your recognition. That's what I'm saying. But That's the only way to get the money. recognition. Yeah. So, Jason, I feel that the minister could use this opportunity to build social change in our environment. There are lots of girls and boys on the street. We can get them into different clinics, acting clinics, um, you know, uh, you teaching them about their bodies and how to use their bodies and what their bodies are actually for. Because the kids go to school and they learn about geography and all kinds of things, but they don't learn about human interaction, connection, and just the arts in general. I mean, if you want to learn about the arts, you leave school and then you learn about the arts. But we should teach our kids what the arts are and encourage them, you know? Are you a singer? Are you going to be a director? Um, because those are not the questions that we ask, yeah. you know? You know, it, it's it, it's got to start w with, with the young. And, mm. you know, we're talking about arts and culture, but it actually starts with culture. So, yeah, so I think the, you know, it needs to be embedded into everybody's culture. Absolutely. Um, because it starts when you're young. Uh, as as kids that and instead of being out on the streets, as you said before, they should be learning how to how to sing, how to play right. a musical instrument, how to dance. Right. But again, it all takes funding. So here's the thing. Mm -hmm. So if you had Gate McKenzie sat right here now with us as a guest, mm -hmm. if what would you say to him? What's your message? I would say congratulations, first of all. And I'd say Thank you for your vision, because we know it's a big vision. And thank you for being the one who's going to listen to what we have to say and create change, not sit on your ass and get a check. We want someone who is going to be in the trenches with us, you know, to affect this change in South Africa. So that's a, actually a great answer, because I thought you were going to say, I was, you were going to ask him for money for your next independent <laughs> film or something like that. That's, so, that'll yeah, be the next answer, question. Actually. That'll be the I next might, question. I might ask him, but yeah, we'll so see. He might, he, might not, he might be too big to talk to me now. I don't know. We'll soon find out, won't we? We'll see if we can get him on the show, maybe. Well, if we put him in the film, then he'll fund it, right? Yeah, I'm sure he'll be fine. I mean, cameo at the back there. <laughs> but anyway, I don't know what your views are. That's our views. We've been talking quite a little bit of time now. So why don't you make a comment? Tell us what you think. What do you think about arts and culture? Absolutely. Have you 
tried to get involved yourself and you've been rejected for some reason or it's just not worked for you as someone helped you we like to hear positive stories more than negative yes and then write some comments below don't forget to hit subscribe obviously like everything we do and we're going to catch you soon aren't we and we also want to know what you think about the new minister what he should be doing what you can suggest for him to do that's what we want to know. So don't forget to engage with us on our social media platforms. We'll see you for the next J&J podcast. You can join the J&J community by joining all our social media platforms and keeping this conversation going. Don't forget to hit the notification button and like and subscribe. <laughs>